Hello there, Gaia 131 entered Bleeding Edge not long ago and today we are going to take a look at what's new in Gaia 131. Now keep in mind that it's a Bleeding Edge version and that means it's not as stable as the production ready version but we get new features which are not in the production ready version so if you want to try that out I recommend you switch to the Bleeding Edge version. That being said I haven't had crashes since it launched also since it's the first Bleeding Edge in later steps there will be more improvements and features coming. So let's start with the most exciting one. Tiled build now supports up to 8k tiles and up to 256 tiles which earlier was 128. Now keep in mind that this 8k tiles are for the tile build but in the normal build we can go up to 16k resolution. So let's change the method to tile build and if you scroll down here is the 8k tiles which is 8129 and the total number of tiles are now increased to 256 which earlier was 128 in version 1.3. Now all that means that a single landscape can have 2 million by 2 million pixels. So to put it into perspective if we are talking 1 meter per pixel in Unreal then that landscape would be 1.5 times the size of India or 2 times of Mexico. Since it's the first bleeding edge in the final the number of tiles are expected to be increased up to 512. That would mean that the final landscape would be twice the size of United States. Also with the tile build if you only want to export a certain number of tiles that's also possible under the selective tile build. So we'll click this and if you click select tiles let's decrease the number of tiles first maybe to three. Now select tiles. So we have these tiles right here and if you click on any tile then it will be selected and now if we export then only these tiles will be exported. We can also view our reference image if you have any. It's the same as clicking on this one. Here you can see the reference grid and if you are working on a custom map so you want to follow the general shape of some other map that you have created so you can use a custom reference image here. For the best result that custom image should be a square. So let's load our own custom image right here. So we'll go to custom. These are the overlays that Gaia gives us but we'll use our own. So something like this. So now that we have our image overlaid, let's say we only want to export this continent right here. So we'll go to select tiles and load the reference image right here. And here we can see this is the continent that we want to export. Untick this and we will only export these two tiles. Along with this we have preserve tile cache so you don't have to build your tiles again and again. Also the tiles now can have overlapping pixels. We can choose the number of pixels from right here. Now this is available in tile build and split build as well. Another thing for tile build is we have a new node that can import tiles now. If you right click and search for tile input then this is the node right here. Now we can browse and select our tiles. So here I exported this landscape and these are the tiles. So we'll select any one tile and tile input will automatically detect all the tiles. Now this one looks different from what we have right here. That is because the scale. So here we only have 5000 meters. If we increase the scale now this map will match the scale of this landscape. Now that's all the news about the tile build. So let's talk about the new nodes that came with it. The first one is outcrops. As the name suggests it will create outcrop for our landscape and we can choose how much it covers our landscape. So let's bring in a ridge node. So let's turn off the reference grid for now. So this is the ridge and with outcrops we get all these beautiful looking rocks. Now we can choose how much it covers our landscape. We can have large cluster, small cluster or it can cover the whole landscape or we can have some random rocks here and there just like this. And we can choose how much detail we want for our rocks, how much our rock clusters are broken. We can choose the protrusion amount and the blending. And with outcrops we get two outputs. The first one is the normal landscape that we always get. And just like other look dev nodes we also get a texturing part. Here if you look at the mask we'll put this as underlay. So right click and pin as underlay. And let's take a look at the mask. So if you auto level it you'll see the mask is covering where all those rocks are. There are the rocks. And this is the mask for the rocks. You can use this for texturing purposes. The next new node is under adjustments. So if you go in the toolbox under adjustment we have the slope blur. So we'll connect this right here and with slope blur we also need a guide input. So we'll put the whole landscape for now and you can see the result it gives us. Again with the slope blur we can control its intensity and how many times it is applied, the direction and so on. And then we also have the quality and anti-aliasing. The next node is under Erosion which is the stratify node. Now this node was also present in Gaia 1.3. Just like this we could choose our strength and substrata from right here. This time it has a new mode lateral stratification. Let's connect it and take a look. 
so here we have the lateral stratification now this has quite a lot of improvements now again with this we can change the stratification and a whole bunch of settings we also have four styles the normal preserved slant and flatten and under strata we also have the old stratifier which is under localized classic so this is what it used to be earlier and this is the improved one and speaking of improved one the river also has significant improvements so internally the river simulation has changed quite a bit and the surface output for this which is right here we put a fx to it so the surface has also improved for mesh and now we'll be using this surface mesh in the next video for the unreal water system when we start to create water in our unreal landscape we will pin this as unreal and bring in the texture and set maps in the set map there are more maps added in the rocky library we have now 593 which earlier was 440 and under green we have 261 which earlier was 218 and now we can even edit our set maps and for that the improvements has gone to the synth node so let's bring in a synth node so synth node is like a custom set map so synth node just like set map provides us with the color so we'll connect the texture to it now to edit our set map the synth has another input which is called color and if we connect our set map to the second input in the synth now we have that set map as our gradient so this set map right now is right here we can change the number of handle right here with the stop so the more stops the more precise this is and we can click on any handle and change the color just like this we can edit our set map also we can use a file node so you can take the file node and choose any texture and click treat as srgb and now we have loaded this map in the file we can also put this in the color now other than these the slope node also has some improvements so bring in the slope node and now the fall off is in degrees if we click the classic style this is the earlier slope that we had and in that one the fall off was between 0 and 100 percent and now we have more precise control with the degrees so let's say we take the slopes between 0 and 14 percent with a 10 percent fall off that means plus minus 10 degrees will be selected you can change the degrees from right here and you can go as high as 90 degrees now that's all the exciting improvements in Gaia 131 as it improves we'll see more and more features